All right, welcome back to the uh, Top 25 Voter Pod. Uh, with me, as always, is my friend John Werner. John, how are you doing? Bryce, I see you've picked another selection out of your vast array of caps. Yes, I uh, have more than one Astros cap. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's for sure. So, yeah, you know, you got to you gotta shake it up. Keep, keep people on their toes. Well, it's almost baseball season. It's true, but we are here to talk NCAA <laughs> tournament basketball. It's a March Madness edition of the podcast. Um, so, John, the Baylor men are a number three seed. We now know where everybody's going. Um, they will play in the south region of the NCAA tournament against UC Santa Barbara. That it will be uh, Friday in Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, so the winner of that game would play Sunday against the Creighton, uh, North Carolina state, uh, winner. So how do you feel about the bears chances of potentially reaching the sweet 16? You know, I, I think they're really pretty good. Uh, of course, uh, against Iowa state, their rebounding was awful. They got out boarded 44 to 17, their defense has been erratic all year, but uh, you know a lot of these guys have tournament experience, obviously, and uh, I just like uh, just kind of the way the bracket plays out a little bit. I think they're going to be much more athletic than, than the Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara, although they're pretty hot. They've won seven in a row. They won the Big West. They won the Big West tournament, uh, and if they get past them. Uh, Creighton or North Carolina State. Uh, you might remember this. In 2014, they played Creighton in the second round in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And they walloped them by 30. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember that. Uh, Creighton had, who was their big? Doug McDermott. Doug McDermott. He went on to play in the NBA. But, yeah, they just, they obliterated Creighton. Yeah, Baylor was much more athletic than them. I, I think they would be again. Uh, so uh, I, I like their chances. Uh, then, you know, the two seed in the South region is uh, is Arizona. They're really good. Been good all year. Fixture in the top 10. And the, and the top seed is <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Very good team. Great, great defense. Uh, so I think it would probably be difficult to make the final four unless Baylor really ramps up its defense and rebounding. But I do like their chances uh, of getting to Louisville in the uh, sweet 16. Yeah. You know, uh, you mentioned Alabama, uh, obviously they've had a lot of uh, mm-hmm. off the field distractions these last few weeks. I think maybe mm-hmm. a lot of the country might even be sort of rooting against them. Um, and yet they still ended up, you know, winning, um, that SEC tournament. Um, so they, you know, they have sort of been, been able to kind of block that out, but they also got hammered by Oklahoma. Remember Ooh, back gosh. in the, uh, SEC big 12 challenge. So, you know, uh, I, I agree with you. I think it sets up pretty well, certainly for Baylor to make the second weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, you you obviously have to play really, really well to get past teams like Arizona or Alabama, you know, who you would expect to be there. Um, upsets happen, though. There could be some, some weird things uh, happen, so we'll see how it all plays out. As for the Baylor women, they are a seven seed. We, uh, we had tried – we kind of broke that down last week thought they might be an eight or a nine. That was, that was kind of some of the projections out there, but I think that their wins um, that they had really helped them. I mean, um, especially being on the road, you know, yeah. all those wins. Good road wins. Yeah. Uh, but they will play Alabama on Saturday um, in stores, Connecticut. And then of course the winner will play, Uh, They'll play UConn. Let's just put it out there. I don't think Vermont's going to beat UConn, but on UConn's home court uh, next Monday. Um, So how do you like the the Baylor women's chances? I mean, uh, of beating Alabama. And then is there any chance they pull off an upset beating UConn on their own home home court? 
I like their chances in the first round. Like you said, uh, most people thought they'd be an eight or nine seed. So getting a seven seed is a, you know, a pretty good deal for them. Uh, you know, of course, Baylor's not a great team. They have, have a lot of things going right. Um, but, you know, they're not going to play. Alabama's not Iowa State. And Iowa State, yeah, you know, they play them really well. Mm -hmm. uh, 63, 63. And then Iowa State scored the last 11 to pull away. But I thought they played overall not bad in that game. Uh, you know, if they can finish this game, uh, unlike the last game, I, I think they have a good shot. I'd say about a 2% chance to beat UConn, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I might give them a little more than that, but yeah. uh, certainly they would be a drastic underdog against UConn. Let's go to Alabama first. So um, Alabama's coached by Christy Curry. Sure, I remember her. Uh, yeah, coached uh, at Louisiana Tech. Uh, with Leon Barmore, coached um, at Texas Tech. She coached at Purdue, um, but coached at Texas Tech. That's where most of our Big 12 listeners will probably remember her from. And her teams at Tech were were okay. Yeah. Um, and her teams at Alabama have been okay. I mean, you know, she's been there 10 years. This is her second NCAA tournament team. Now it's her second in the last three years, and I think it's probably her best team. Okay. Um, the other thing about them, you mentioned that they're not Iowa State, but they might be a little more Iowa State-ish than people realize. They do shoot the three at like 38% as a team, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty good. They've got some three-point shooters, and that obviously <laughs> was a big thing against Iowa State. You know, um, you have to guard the line for – uh, you can't guard the line for 34 or 35 minutes, John. You got to guard it for 40 <laughs> minutes, right? <laughs> when you have an Ashley Jones out there. Right. So they're going to have to do the same thing against Alabama. Uh, you know, they're going to have to play all the way to the, the finish. Uh, Alabama's best player is Brittany Davis. She averages around 17 points a game. Um, so, you know, they'll obviously have their target on her. But she's actually the only player on that team that averages double figures. Um, mm -hmm. They have several around not eight or nine points a game. But um, Baylor, meanwhile, you know, that's something they do well is spread it around. You know, they're, they typically, especially when they're playing well, will have four to five players in double figures. Um, and – so, you know, I do like Baylor's chances against Alabama if they can play a good game. UConn at UConn is going to be tough. No question. Uh, there's going to be a huge crowd there. Um, Nikki Collins was talking the other day about just how much they love and appreciate women's basketball. And, and she said, yeah, it's funny. You know, I've seen before where um, they've actually, like, cheered – the opposing team when they finally score their first bucket or whatever, or, you know, whatever, just kind of like get behind them a little bit. Um, she said, of course, it's easy to do when your team's winning by 30, you know, <laughs> um, you know, this is not a vintage UConn team. So I think that bodes a little well for Baylor. I mean, they're really good. Um, and they're battle tested. UConn, as under Gino, they always play a tough schedule. Um, but they have been beaten. Um, you know, South Carolina exposed them in a game pretty well earlier this year. Um, and, you know, they also don't have Paige Becker. She's been gone the whole season. Um, so I'm just throwing some things out there that, you know, <laughs> maybe gives Baylor a chance. I honestly think Baylor can win. I, I put their chances more like 20%. Wow. Um, uh, but they're going to have to play one of their best games of the year. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, and, you know, they're going to have to – and they've shown their, that they're capable of that at Ames and at Austin and at Norman. Um, so maybe – you know, 13, 15,000 UConn fans will just fire them up. You know, we'll see. I mean, 
that's that's the one thing where I just that's why I give Baylor a puncher's chance. And they might have less of a chance if it was at the Ferrell Center. <laughs> <laughs> they did play better on the road, and uh, I think uh, you know having a great atmosphere probably helps. Yeah, yeah, I think they get kind of fired up for that. So if you're filling out a bracket, who do you like to win uh, the men's and women's tournaments? Well, I think Bama has the best team. They're an incredible defensive team. Uh, and really the off field distractions haven't seemed to really bother them a whole lot. <laughs> I mean, they stomped a and in the SEC championship game. Uh, but I'm going to say a dark horse is Marquette. <clears throat> They've been a bit under the radar. Shaka Smart, uh, definitely in contention for National Coach of the Year, I'd say, along with Jerome Tang at K-State. I mean, you know, not much was expected of them. Then they played Baylor early in the year, blew them off the court in Milwaukee by 26 points. And they've been really good. Uh, You know, just, I wouldn't say ran through the Big East, but, you know, won most of their games there. Uh, I think that's a dark horse pick. Um, Houston, Marcus Sasser is banged up. Uh, we'll see how well he's going to do. Yeah, a lot of people are not even picking Houston to get to the Final Four. Yeah, I think Kansas, they, they just don't seem to have enough depth like they've had, like last year's team. Purdue, I think another number one seed, Zach Eady, probably the best player in the country. But I, I don't know if they have the all-around team to, to win it. So I'm going to pick Marquette as a dark dark horse choice. As far as women, South Carolina, hard to pick against them. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I'll start with the women right there and just agree with you. I mean, um, we've talked a lot this season about the parity in women's basketball, and I completely stand by that. I think, um, you know, just one to 68, this may be as – bunched as the field has ever been um but south carolina is the best team um they're undefeated for a reason uh that's not to say they won't be pushed or anything like that i think they will be pushed uh but they're they're really good um and they're the favorite um they can be beat uh but but i like their chances of, of finishing off an undefeated season um, as far as the men, I mean, you broke it down, uh, but I kind of do like Kansas. Um, yeah. And part of it is um, I agree with you that they are a different team and maybe not as deep as last year, but I, I really think they may be as tough as last year, if not tougher, um, just because mm-hmm. of the way that, you know, like, for example, you know, Bill Self has this, uh, you know, procedure hospital, you know, he gets, uh, he's obviously ill and out for the Big 12 tournament last week. And that I think would be a distraction that a lot of teams would not be able to withstand. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet they played pretty well in the Big 12 tournament. Now they ended up getting beat by Texas in the championship game, but I kind of admired the way that they, you know, rallied together and, and it just seems like, you know, every time that somebody wrote them off this year, uh, you know, oh, Baylor, or Texas, you know, uh, might win. Well, then Kansas would run off and, and get a big win. So um, that that's just my initial analysis. I haven't really broken the bracket down that closely. But, but yeah, uh, and that, of course, would be back-to-back national championships. It would also be three straight for the Big 12. Mm-hmm. Um it certainly wouldn't surprise me to see a big 12 team win it. Um, Even though, you know, maybe those big 12 teams this year are like five through 10 of the top 10 or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I think that they're all going to be battle tested just because of the conference. Right. Oh, for sure. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I think Texas has a shot. Mm -hmm. They're playing well. Uh, I think Rodney Terry's done a a pretty remarkable job of keeping that team together after, you know, the Chris Beard incident earlier this year. Yeah. Let me say this about Rodney Terry. Uh, 
I don't know what Texas's plan is. Have they? Have they? They they have not uh, signed him yet, or whatever. No, or, they haven't. He's a full time skill. I would say, man. I know he's not your typical Texas hire because Texas almost always, whatever the sport is, goes for kind of the, the big name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, Shaka Smart, Chris Beard uh, in football, you know, Tom Herman or whoever. Um, to me, Roddy Terry is not that big name, but he may be the best fit. Uh, the, well, like you said, what he's done – um, in a weird situation, um, I mean, they've kind of almost played better under him than they did against under Beard. Yeah, uh, I think he's a real players coach. You know, uh, I've known him since mid '90s when he was on Harry Miller's staff. I can see how he at Baylor. Uh, I can see how he would re- relate well to players, and he, you know, he's known as a really good recruiter. Uh, you know, if he can keep his staff together. Uh, it looks like they've got a good staff there too. So that's important, but yeah, I think they should just go ahead and make him the permanent guy. So you and I will be kicking around Denver and, uh, I'll be my, I fly into Hartford, Connecticut and then drive over to stores, but, um, and so, uh, you'll be flying out, um, uh, Wednesday. I'll be flying out Thursday. We got to get there a little early just for, <clears throat> interviews and such. Uh, I'm sure you've scoped out some things. I've scoped out some things. What, you know, for fans that might be making those trips, uh, what is there to do out there, Johnny? Well, there's so much to do out in Colorado, mm. especially stuff I like to do. <laughs> it's, uh, you might it's just, in your wheelhouse. It's in You your might wheelhouse. just fly out there if you're a fan and just forget there's a game. <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, you got skiing, you got Breckenridge, Winter Park, some other ski areas nearby. You got hiking, probably not real high altitude hiking yet because this, the snow's still there. <clears throat> Plenty of hiking around. Uh, I would say those would be the main two things. Um, I don't think Colorado is a real good foodie place. Yeah, we have talked about that before. You, uh, you and I were there together uh, for the women's Final Four. Yeah, but there is one place called the Buckhorn Exchange. I mean, if you want to test some wild game, they've got like elk and buffalo, uh, probably some other animals you've never heard of. Um, but uh, you can get uh, Rocky Mountain oysters, uh you probably know what those are mm-hmm. no thanks bulls, bulls testicles yeah no thank you <laughs> fish <laughs> uh but yeah i i've eaten there before it's pretty interesting place uh got a lot of you know head mounts animal you know a lot of antlers <laughs> <laughs> it's kind you know, of an outdoor the, outdoorsy place the buffalo heads yeah uh, but that'd be an interesting place to try uh but yeah, there's obviously a lot to do out there. Yeah, you know, Janet and I have been to Denver before together. Uh, and we also, gosh, I'd have to look up this place. I, it's not coming to mind off the top of my head. But there was a place, um, it was kind of like a fancy ponchos, okay? Um, <laughs> okay. And because it was a deal where you kind of got all you could eat and, I, and, they, and they brought it to your table and maybe there even was a little flag kind of deal okay but the, the the interesting i'll have to look this up for you john it might be worth going to the i would say the food was not just to die for or anything but the, the weird thing about that place was uh you essentially got a, a show while you ate and yeah. when i say a show i mean i'm not talking about like a little just magic show or whatever like i remember like it, there was this very large dining room and um, spacious and like there were these like cliff divers uh, inside. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it was quite the show. I mean, um, I'll never forget that, but I can't remember the name of the place. So I'll have to look it up and text you that, but. Um, well, been Casa Bonita. I believe that was it. Yes. I went there many, many years ago and you're right. It is a show. 
uh, yeah, it's an interesting place. It is an interesting place, but probably worth visiting at least once. I'm not sure uh, I remember much about the food. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then, you know, you and I ate at a pretty good breakfast place in Denver. Remember that place? Yes, I can't recall the name. right. I can't either, but I, I, yeah, don't remember, yeah. I don't remember if we just stumbled across that or if we found <laughs> it or whatever, but uh, but it was decent. It was it was pretty good. Um, I bet there's some Denver people out there that um, maybe we can, you know, get some Colorado folks to chime in and and tell us where the really good food in Denver. Yeah, tips from locals. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As for uh, the Connecticut area, so um, I've been there uh, 2010. Uh, that was Baylor's first trip to Connecticut. And mm -hmm. uh, Brittany was a freshman, Brittany Griner. Um, and it was a big game. And so uh, the Trib sent uh, me to go there. Um, and Jerry Hill was there for the Baylor Bear Insider. We hung out. And um, I remember looking and going, wow. It, it, you just sometimes forget just how close everything is up to you know together up in the northeast right uh, and i mean uh springfield massachusetts where the basketball hall of fame is is just minutes up the road you know from hartford um and i was like dude i am not getting this close to the basketball hall of fame and not going um so yeah i found my time to get up there jerry hill went with me we had a great time visiting the basketball hall of fame i thought it was uh, really well done. Um, but of course, uh, Boston is not extremely far. Uh, it's about an hour and a half from Hartford, which, you know, here in Texas, we're used to just going an hour and a half all the time, you know? Um, yeah, so, right. I mean, uh, I would say you could, you could uh, drive up to Boston if you have the time and do some of the things uh, that that are there obviously there's a lot of history in boston there's a lot of sports uh that are great in boston um but i will say i have already looked the celtics and the bruins are out of town <laughs> oh, okay uh while we're there but uh you can uh, get like a tour of fenway park and personally i have never been to boston so i am going to try to uh, oh, cool. kick over there um and rhode island is a state i've never been through so i'm gonna at least drive through rhode island just to to check that one off the list but uh and then you know hartford's kind of a cool little city um it's got uh you know some museums and stuff that you know um and i i've looked at the weather i think it's supposed to be 40s and 50s rod ate a lot was uh you know, telling me, oh, you're going to see snow, you know, and I, and I haven't seen snow on the forecast. So uh, <laughs> I th I'm hoping that there won't be a ton of snow, but, um, and I haven't ever been to stores, honestly. Uh, okay. So the, when they played them in 2010, they actually played in Hartford ah. uh, at the bigger arena there. But so uh, they'll be playing in a Gamble Pavilion, UConn's kind of, you know, historic uh Jim, you know, like, like I said, it should be sold out and uh, I'll, I, it'll be a fun atmosphere. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, to, obviously a tough draw for Baylor to play UConn possibly in the second round, but man, it'd be cool to see that court. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, and, and as I wrote in my advance, two programs that over the past, you know, two decades uh, have been I mean, you could probably say that UConn and Baylor in the in the 21st century are oh, yeah. are the two top programs in women's college basketball. Oh, for sure. I mean, it'd be number one UConn, then number two Baylor. Right, <laughs> it would be. Uh, but Baylor has three national championships in that span. I mean, it, uh, Kim Mulkey built a, a an elite program that was right there at, near the top every year and obviously um had some some epic battles with UConn um in fact I'm gonna if they do end up getting past Alabama and playing UConn in the um second round 
my plan is to kind of go back through that series a little bit and break it down for our readers some of the you know the times that they've met they they're uh, they've met UConn nine times including twice before in the NCAA tournament uh, UConn won five of those nine meetings they're five and four um, but UConn has won both of the previous meetings in the in the uh, uh, NCAA tournament including pretty famously Kim Mulkey's last game, uh, you know, oh, yeah. a couple seasons ago, uh, which was controversial. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, it really was. They missed a call in that game. There's no question about it. So, yeah. uh, you know, should be should be a lot of fun up there in, uh, you know, the heart of women's basketball country. Yeah, I think we both got pretty cool places to go to. Yeah, no doubt. And we'll see if we get to talk about the second weekend. <laughs> we <laughs> yeah. can still talk about the second weekend. We just might not have teams uh, to cover. We'll see. Yeah. Um, so enjoy your trip tomorrow. Yeah, and you too, uh, Bryce. Yeah. Yeah, I'll enjoy mine. And we'll talk to you all later down the road. All right. See you. March Madness.